This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermin Sheikh. As we continue our discussion about possible war crimes in Gaza, Palestinian Foreign Minister Riyad al-Malki said Tuesday his administration was making efforts to have Palestine become a member of the International Criminal Court, a legal step that would grant the court jurisdiction over alleged crimes in the territory. Yes, I uh, did meet uh, the prosecutor. Uh, for, my, for us, it was very important just, you know, to get acquainted with the work of the ICC and uh, what is really being required for, for uh, Palestine to get access to, uh, to put its signature to the Rome Statute and to become a member of the, the ICC. Because uh, what has really happened recently against uh, the Palestinian people in Gaza, uh, uh, atrocities committed by Israel, they required uh, immediate reaction from us. And uh, so here we are. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, ready to uh, to, get, to ask questions, uh, to be prepared for uh, the next step. Joining us from The Hague is John Dugard, the former U.N. Special Rapporteur on Human Rights in the Palestinian Territories, now Emeritus Professor of International Law at the University of Leiden in the Netherlands. His recent essay for Al Jazeera America is headlined, Debunking Israel's Self-Defense Argument. Still with us in Washington, D.C., Kenneth Roth, Executive Director of Human Rights Watch. John Dugard, as the ceasefire talks begin in Cairo right now, uh, and the tally is done of the wounded, of the dead, we looks like close to 1,900 Palestinians have been killed, um, thousands have been wounded, uh, 10,000 homes destroyed, 5,000 um, uh, that have been uh, severely—the uh, uh, houses have been se severely damaged. Um, can you talk about um, the whole issue of the International Criminal Court? Well, uh, Ken Roth has— uh explain the basis for jurisdiction. Uh, Palestine is not a party to the Rome Statute, and in order to become a full member of the court, it would have to become a party to the Rome Statute. It can, however, make a declaration accepting the jurisdiction of the court for crimes committed in Gaza at a particular time, and that has not yet been done in recent times since the General Assembly recognised Palestine as a state. But I think it's important to realize that in 2009, following Operation Cast Lead, Palestine did submit a declaration referring all international crimes committed in Palestine to the International Criminal Court. And that was rejected early in 2012 because at that stage, Palestine was not recognized as a state. But later in 2012, the General Assembly did recognize Palestine as a state. So my position is that it is possible for the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court to exercise jurisdiction to initiate an investigation already without any more ado. And this is confirmed by the fact that in the last few weeks, the Minister of Justice and the Deputy Minister of Justice of Palestine have submitted uh, documents to the International Criminal Court indicating that, as far as they are concerned, the 2009 declaration is still valid. So I must confess that I hold the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court partly responsible for the fact that no proceedings have been initiated against Israel and Hamas before the International Criminal Court. Uh, John Dugard, you've also uh, made comparisons between uh, apartheid South Africa and the situation in the occupied Palestinian territories. Could you elaborate on what you think the similarities are? Well, if I look at the situation in uh, Palestine, which I know very well as former special rapporteur, if I look at it as a former South African, then I see very similar uh, circumstances prevailing in uh, Palestine as prevailed in South Africa during apartheid. But I think it's also important to look at the situation in terms of the 1973 United Nations Convention on the Suppression of Apartheid, which defines 
apartheid and which applies it to situations beyond uh, southern Africa. And essentially, it requires uh, three conditions. First of all, that there should be two groups. Here there are clearly two groups, the Palestinians and the uh, Israelis. Uh, secondly, that the dominant group should commit inhumane acts against the uh, subject group, and that clearly is happening in the occupied Palestinian territory. Israel has uh, subjected the Palestinians to all sorts of inhumane acts. And then thirdly, this should be done with the intention of maintaining domination. And one can draw that influence from the presence of settlers in the uh, West Bank, because today one has some 600,000 settlers in the West Bank who actually constitute a colonial enterprise. And as with all colonies, the colonial peoples uh, or the colonial power subjects the colonized people to domination. And so if one looks at these three conditions, I think it's clear that in terms of the 1973 Convention on Apartheid, Israel's policies and practices in the occupied Palestinian territory are tantamount to apartheid. And, and John Dugard, how do you respond uh, to Israel's argument that, in fact, it was attacking Gaza only in self-defense? Your article, of course, is titled Debunking Israel's Self-Defense Argument. So could you lay out what you say there? Well, it's very important for Israel that it should portray itself as the victim in the present conflict. And President Obama and both houses of Congress have uh, endorsed the view that uh, Israel acts in self-defense. But as I see the situation, it is very different. Gaza is an occupied territory. It's part of the occupied Palestinian territory. The fact that Israel has withdrawn its ground troops, or had before the present incursion, uh, does not mean that it is no longer the occupying power, because it has always retained control, effective control, over the territory of Gaza. And that's the test in international law, effective control. Israel controls Gaza by means of the land crossings, by controlling the airspace and the sea space and by carrying out repeated incursions into the territory. So given the fact that Gaza is an occupied territory, it means that Israel's present assault on Gaza is simply a way of enforcing the continuation of the occupation. And the response of the Palestinian militants should be seen as the response of an occupied people that wishes to resist the occupation. It has taken this resistance into Israel itself, but it still remains resistance. And I think it would be very helpful to see the occupation of Gaza in the same context as one might see, for instance, the occupation of, shall we say, Netherlands during the Second World War by Germany. It's an occupied territory, and if Israel uses force against the occupied territory, it's not acting in self-defense, it's acting as an occupying power.